The studio has made a positive move by undertaking an active approach towards developing the Captain America supporting cast, setting up the transition for Cap from World War II into the present day. This is an extremely important area for the franchise to address, and surprisingly, one that has never really been a major focus in the comics, despite being hinted at hundreds of times. Captain America is a man out of time. He has no one, he knows no one. His family, friends, fellow soldiers, they're all dead. And let's face it, over 70 years, the world has come a long way. It's essential that we see Steve's pain and the difficulty he has with mourning his loss and adapting to what comes now. There's a deleted scene from the Avengers movie that shows him looking up people that he used to know. It would be good to see some more scenes like that. Some confirmation that Bucky's body was never found. And heck, there's even some comedic opportunity to try to bring him up to speed with the technological advances of the modern time. That's him. Wait, what am I looking for again? A giant cat? It was a man. Can the projectionist make this brighter? Uh, sure. Jarvis, run a full spectrum analysis, will you? And make it brighter. So, we won the war. Thanks in part to you. So Hydra's gone. Ah, uh, it's, uh, complicated. I've had Jarvis prepare a room for you until we get everything sorted out. You've been gone a long time, Cap. Welcome back, son. The building has its own voice. It is very disconcerting. I have to say that never in a million years did I really think the studios would go down the path of identifying Batrock Zalipa as a legitimate villain for the silver screen. Bold and dangerous, I love it. For so long, he was the epitome of a cheesy character with extra corn. But hey, he's agile, dangerous, and scary. Cast as a mercenary, seeing what they do with him may well be worth the price of admission alone. His more recent appearances in the comic books have portrayed him as cold-hearted, calculating, goal-driven, and above all else, really emphasize that he's nearly without equal in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's very Brubaker-esque. Finally, that brings us to the other major character announced to make their silver screen debut, Brock Rumlow, aka Crossbones. Another character that before Brubaker came onto the scene really didn't stand for much other than blatant supervillainy. Over the course of Brubaker's run, the character was developed more into a high terrorist, cold-hearted killer willing to do the job for the right price type rather than the traditional I love death and destruction angle. Again, given the plethora of characters already cast in this film, I really wonder what the appeal of bringing him in now is. I can only imagine that given his tie to the Red Skull in the comics, that they intend to use him as a tool to help usher Johan's return for the conclusion. Given that online he has been identified as a S.H.I.E.L.D. operative, one must surely consider him to be a mole that will sabotage S.H.I.E.L.D. and no doubt kick the heroes when they're down. With rumours circulating about Cap's imminent death and the role Crossbones played in that in the comics, well, let's just say it adds weight to that particular prediction. Captain America The First Avenger was a vital but risky prospect for the Marvel Cinematic Universe that only succeeded on the background of deep thought, hard work, respect and creativity. It's interesting to note that with the foundations of the character already set, and future writers and producers already having something to go off, a blueprint design if you will, the risk of the project has not decreased. In fact, it's actually done the exact opposite and climbed. With the basic foundations laid and the origin story told, the obvious characters and storylines utilised, any semblance of a guide is gone, the common ingredient to the failure of most sequels. That means that now we will be evaluating the creative direction of the writing staff, directors and producers, who now really have to put themselves out there. A safe story is out. It's boring. We want risk and cutting edge. The idea of basing the sequel on the Winter Soldier arc, arguably the greatest ever Captain America story, is a good one. It's edgy, challenging and has a lot of potential, but it's a risky proposition because the historical significance of that particular story and its impact on Captain America's heritage 
holds no appeal to the average moviegoer who is not a fan of the comics. Make no mistake, this angle can only succeed if it's done flawlessly. Brubaker achieved this in the comics because he studied the history, the characters, and what the essence of the comic book was about. We can only hope that the studio has put an equal amount of work into ensuring the success of this film. I personally can't help but feel that if this flops, and it has a very high chance to do so given the degree of risk of the project, that there may be no recovery for Captain America as a standalone character in this franchise. So that's it for this particular series of films. Captain America The Winter Soldier is now out and I'll be posting a review as soon as I can. Can't wait to go see it. Please feel free to leave any questions, comments or found corrections and thanks for listening. This is Winter Soldier here, signing off.